Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCrady, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCrady. We continue today with Authority Quotient. What is the measure of authority operating in your life? And what is the source of it? If it is a flesh, then it's really coming from a place of fear and therefore control. We don't want to live there. But I do share today the four fear responses. Listen up and see if you can identify maybe where you've been. Continuing on with authority quotient. Now we will get to the bitterness quotient, to the measure of bitterness that we have. And I'm pretty specifically going to address bitterness towards authority because this so marks and hinders and is such a barrier to us properly relating to authority. Um, Therefore, that means it stunts our growth, my friends. But if I'm not careful, I'll jump right into the BQ, to the bitterness quotient, but I need to stay with the AQ, and I need to uh, stay with authority quotient. Uh, I recently, just in some of the readings that I do, came across a pretty quick way to remember uh, the four fear responses. Some would say there are five, and I'll try to give you all of them because they all start with the letter F, and you know how I love it, that the things that deal with fear all start with an F, okay? So I probably won't be able to resist saying it to you. But I'm saying it in light of authority quotient is that uh, in our last episode together, we were talking out of Hebrews 12 and just simply recognizing the true authority, the true covering and protection and and all of God and, and that it's not to keep us small, but it is to bring us to the full measure of Christ within us that we might rule with them. And the, the scripture says, my friends, Romans five seventeen. read it in as many versions as you can, that we are to rule in this life as kings. That doesn't sound to me like uh, some, you know, control freak God that wants to keep me small and under his thumb where I'm so afraid all the time. So we don't want to um, stay operating in a the flesh factor, if you will, of how flesh interacts. You know, flesh is the ways of uh, the old nature in meeting its own needs. It's how it copes with everything and defends everything and tries to get for itself everything, tries to gain for itself, tries to protect itself. It's defense mechanisms, coping mechanisms. My friends, that is not how the sons are called to live. I don't need just better coping mechanisms. So I wanted today uh, to just deposit this in you as you're considering these things and you're looking at these things, what might still be some of the flesh factor that's going on in the way that you relate to authority, whether that's to, you know, your boss, um, a teacher, uh, a leader, a pastor, a spouse, because spouses are to be mutually submitted one to another. Uh, my friends, my friends, I can't, I can't get off on that. All right. So, um, we, we don't want to be in the kingdom of God, um, saying that we are, you know, being discipled, that we're free, that, you know, all of that. And still it's just really some license of the flesh that's still going on. It's a faux freedom that we have, and we want to be in real true freedom as we were meant to live properly relating to the father who is raising us as his sons. That's what it said in Hebrews 12 in the uh, message Bible. God is educating you. You're not being punished, my friends. You're being prepared and that we don't want to drop out of God's school where he is loving us, raising us, that we're in a in a a connection to him, an abiding connection that he made possible, right? So that we could receive everything that we need. Being in an atmosphere of total security and love, 
uh, and value so that we could not worry about having to earn those things or that he's just some God that has to be appeased. Hmm? So I want to talk to you a little bit about that. No, this is our father who came for us, sought us out, made plans for us, and now brings us into that in the truest, truest depths of freedom. And I loved where it said in, in Hebrews 12, you know, don't shrug off, don't disregard, don't discount God's discipline and nurture, but don't be crushed by it either. Right? How many of you know we are learning how to yield to true authority? And there is a godly fear. It speaks of this in Hebrews 5 when it talks about Jesus, that Jesus thought it a horror to be separated from the bright presence of the Father. That was what, if there was a fear, Jesus was like, I don't want, I shrink away from anything that tries to separate me from him. And my friends, where there is a devilish, demonic fear, you can bet it's trying to separate you because you can't trust God. I mean, you're going to have to take care of things. I mean, you're going to have to be filled with anxiety and you're going to have to be a control freak because you're going to have to take care of everything because, you know, you can't trust God. My friends, come on. (laughs) We can trust him by choice, but that comes out of knowing that we share in the very trust and faith of Jesus Christ himself. And there is no fear there. I'm not trying to not be afraid. It's when I abide and share in the very nature of Jesus Christ himself, there is no uh, fear in that nature. It's just not there. I don't have to try to not have it. It's just not present. This is why abiding is so powerful. But here's what I wanted to just to just put out there for you today to consider is many times here are four responses when we are improperly fearing authority, whoever that might be. So many of us have heard of the fight or flight response. When we are under attack, there is a threat. We are afraid. We, here are the four fear responses. Fight, flight, freeze, and fawn. Fight, flight, freeze, fawn. Now, fight means that when I am a perceiving or truly under attack or threat, I'm going to fight back. I am aggressive. I am, uh, you know, resistant, uh, and I'm coming at you with everything I've got. Flight, is when I am under attack or perceived threat is coming at me, I run. Freeze is when I can't move or act against a threat. I'm paralyzed. But my friends, this one, this was very interesting. This fawn response means that I will try to appease authority comply. Just let me comply because that's how I control you. I'll just do whatever you say. But it's out of fear. Hmm? Watchman Nee has a quote that says, uh, the obedience of slaves uh, comes out of fear. The obedience of sons comes out of love. So we, we need to really, you know, We need to grapple with this. We need to think about this. But this fawn response to fear, let me let me say it again. It will appease authority. It will comply. It will be a people pleaser on steroids. Because I'll be so cooperative and so helpful. I am a yes man. I say yes to everything. And in this, when we live this way, in this fawn response to authority, it means we will neglect our own needs, maybe because we think sacrifice really impresses authority. 
So we'll neglect our own needs and then they'll just be amazed at our work ethic and how much we put up with and we sacrifice and whatever you ask of them, they'll do it. They never say no. Yeah, because they struggle to say no uh, because they don't want to appear, you know, combative. I don't want to be disagreeable because, you know, people don't like disagreeable people, right? And we can't say no to reasonable or unreasonable request. So if I'm a fawner, <laughs> I fawn. I don't fight. I don't flee. I don't freeze. I fawn. I am neglecting my own needs, which what that really means is I neglect to take my truest needs to my father. If he's meeting my needs, my friends, I'm not, I don't need to neglect my needs so as to impress you or your needs are always more important because that's when there's an improper uh, imbalance in power is I'm nobody, you're somebody you're the authority. You're the important person. Hmm? No, that's no. The authority isn't the more important person. It's simply a person with greater responsibility to do what's right. Hmm? I mean, in the scriptures, you know, when it says, you know, slaves obey your masters. Uh, wives obey your husbands, children obey your parents, all of that, right? But it reminds the other person, yeah, you want to be the greater authority? Then remember, you have the greater responsibility. So masters, remember that you have a master in heaven. Hmm? Parents, right? You don't exasperate your children to anger. Right? Husbands love your wives. See, God is the ultimate authority. And let me assure you, God takes the greater responsibility. So we need to understand this. And, and when we preach half the scripture, half the gospel, it's like, well, you know, you better obey your spouse. You know, you better obey your parents. You know, you better obey your boss. Yeah. Well, there is also the flip side of that. Hmm. Now, it's not from me as the employee to be telling the employer what they're to be doing, but I do need to have this attitude deep in my kingdom heart. Is I'm not under the, you know, the idea that the boss is more important. They may carry more authority and more responsibility. Hmm? And they have a boss too. Right? So there's a whole chain of command, if you will. And, but the mutually submissive, and when a person is truly f free, they do not live in these, these uh, fear responses. Right? So if I'm fawning, okay, because I think we all understand fight, flight, and freeze. But this fawning one, this is when I'm improperly relating to authority. And the authority quotient in my life is way, way, way out of balance. And I think they're important and I'm a nobody. Okay, hold on, my friends. Where does this come from? Hmm? Where does this come from? Because guess what that means? I think then when I become an authority, then I'm somebody and y'all are all the peons. No. 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 See, your attitude towards authority has everything to do with the authority that you're going to become. Hmm? So let me just review this. In the fawning response, the fear response of when you fawn, F-A-W-N, it means to appease, to comply, to people please. It's really a control tactic. All of these are control tactics when they come out of the flesh. Because I've got to make you happy so you leave me alone. I will do whatever you say so you will shut up. Right? So that you don't find any, any th reason to criticize me. I will be a perfectionist. That's a, you know, people pleaser on steroids. Because perfectionists 
right, are usually perfectionist because then nobody will be able to criticize them. So it's a control tactic. Okay. So if I'm living fawning because I'm operating in improper fear towards authority, I am neglecting my own needs. I struggle to say no. I agree with you to avoid you abandoning me or rejecting me. So it's not real. None of it's real. Hmm? And of course, anxiety, um, mm, deep anxiety over, you know, whatever the outcomes may be. So therefore I'm trying to control everything because I'm scared to death. My friends, what are you afraid of? Hmm? What are you afraid of? I want you to understand that the, the improper relationship to authority comes out straight out of the garden. Childhood may have helped bring form to it, but it is not the source of it. That was right there in the garden. When Adam heard God coming, it says he hid. He was afraid. That was the nature that he had now inherited because previously, when he was still neutral, let's say, Christ wasn't in him nor was uh, sin because the decision hadn't yet been made. He was able to walk in the cool of the day with God. He was able to talk with him, ask questions. But the deeper plan was that Christ would be in him and be formed in him. Don't think that was the pinnacle, the glory on the outside. No, it was Christ in them, the hope of glory. And you can read it in Genesis 3. As soon as that other nature came into them, the entire way they saw God, related to God, interacted with God, hid from God, everything changed. Because God was now someone to be afraid of and hide from and lie to and blame other humans and all manner of things. My friends, if our AQ is going to uh, increase our authority quotient, the measure of authority that we live under, uh, the source of that authority uh, then has everything to do with how much it will um, flourish within us. God's real kingdom in our hearts, his rule and reign within us. That's what the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of heaven is that wherever God is, is that his presence, it is heaven. But that's another conversation for another day. Think about these things, my friends. How do you relate to authority? Do you fight them? Do you run from them? Do you paralyze? Or do you appease, comply, people please? And every bit of it is coming out of the perversion of real authority, which is control. We need to be true people of the kingdom of God, where he rules and reigns in us and over us with our full agreement and full permission so that we can grow up and be the authority that he's called us to be. That we can rule and reign in this life as kings, Romans 5, 17. That we can be seated with him in heavenly places and walk in the earth. That we can go to the tops uh, of culture, whatever that may look like for us. That we can fulfill our assignment. That we can be to our generation who we were meant to be. But it all begins, my friends, right inside of us. Think about these things. Love you all. For more information on Nancy, please visit nancymccrady.com or follow her on social media at nbmccrady.